its state-of-the-art electric shifting technology, the Dura A 7970 series is the latest system addition to the 7900 series. Digital shifting operation by lightly touching the switch initiates electronically controlled gear changing performance of extraordinary precision and smoothness. Now, we'd like to explain the installation and adjustment of the 7970 series, taking note of some new points which are unique to this new series. When the shifting switch is operated, the powerful derailleur motor continues its operation to the shifting position without pausing. Be sure to remove the battery first when installing the components to avoid injuries such as jamming your fingers. Also, be careful not to touch the terminals of the junctions and derailers and electric cable connectors or to allow them to become wet or bent. First, Let's attach the ST7970 to the handlebar. Move the bracket cover from the front side and secure it by tightening the fixing nut with a 5mm Allen key. When installing the components to a carbon handlebar surface, verify the manufacturer's recommended tightening torque for the carbon parts. First, pull the brake lever and hold it in that position. Pass the inner cable through and set the inner end cap into the cable hook. Install the outer casing from the opposite side. Next, install the other lever and brake cable in the same way. The grip width of the ST7970 is steplessly adjustable with the bolt on the upper part of the bracket body. Check the braking operation when making an adjustment. Next, let's install the RD7970 on the frame using a 5mm Allen key. When installing, be careful no damage is caused by the B-tension adjustment screw coming into contact with the dropout tab. A protector needs to be placed on the seat tube when installing the FD7970 to a brazed-on type frame. The protector must be placed to avoid damage to the frame from the pressure from the support bolt of the front derailleur. Find the place where the support bolt of the front derailleur touches the seat tube when adjusting it 
and attach the protector there. Attach duct tape for the protector where there is no direct contact with the support bolt. Note that a protector is not necessary if using an SM80 7900 mounting band. When installing the band on the carbon frame surface, verify the manufacturer's recommended tightening torque for the carbon frame. Adjust so that the clearance between the chain guide outer plate and the largest chain ring is from 1 to 3 millimeters before installing. Use a 5 mm Allen key to fix the clearance between the level section of the chain guide outer plate and the largest chain ring from 0.5 to 1 mm. The chain guide outer plate should be directly above and to the inside of the largest chain ring. Adjust the position of the front derailleur by turning the support bolt with a 2 mm Allen key. Adjust using the support bolt so that the level section of the chain guide outer plate comes directly above and parallel to the largest chain ring. Set the battery bracket. Attach it under the bottle cage temporarily using a bottle cage mounting bolt. Make sure that the clearance is more than 108 millimeters from the end of the battery bracket. Also, make sure that the battery can be put on and taken off when the bottle cage is mounted. After that, tighten up the bolts of the bottle cage. Connect the indicators of junction A and junction B by pressing them together until a click is heard. Connect the electric cable connector to the terminal of the derailleur. Put the indicators of the connector and the terminal of the derailleur together and press the connector into the terminal. Connection is difficult due to the waterproofing. Press in until you hear a click. Fasten junction A to the outer casing of the brake with the provided tie wrap. For the connection to ST7970, please use the TLEW01 special tool. Join the protrusion of the connector to the groove of the thin end part. Move the bracket cover and pull out the connector cover. Join the protrusion of the connector to the groove of the connector cover and connect the cable to the terminal of the lever. Press in 
until you hear a click. You can use either the upper or the lower terminal. The extra terminal can be used for an additional shift switch. When you do not use an additional shift switch, be sure to install a dummy plug using the TLEW01 special tool. And then, mount the battery to make sure the connection is done correctly. Check if the front and rear derailers function correctly and properly by operating the shift switch. Operate the shift switch X of the left lever one or more times to set the front derailleur at the largest chain ring position for mounting of the chain. After that, be sure to dismount the battery. Also, when you remove the connector, use the wide end of the TLEW01 special tool. Please do not pull it forcefully, as it may cause malfunction. Insert the flat face in the derailleur and tilt it to push out the connector. When removing the lever connector, point the flat face of the tool toward the lever. And when removing the connector of junction A, point the flat face of the tool towards junction A. Set the electric cables around the frame temporarily. For the wiring of junction A, allow an ample margin taking into consideration the mounting position adjustment of the ST7970 and turning the handlebar from side to side up to the maximum. You can attach the wiring of junction A to the handlebar when wrapping the handlebar with tape. Set the excess electric cable to junction B to adjust the length. You can wind it for up to 120 millimeters. For more information, please read the routing map of the service instructions. When you finish the routing, Fasten junction B under the BB hanger with a bolt. Next, let's attach the cable cover to the frame. To assure adhesion, wipe off dirt and oil on the frame with alcohol or cleaner before attaching the cable cover. Mount the cable cover to the frame so that it covers the electric cable. The CN7900 has a forward side and a reverse side, making the direction of the installation very important. The forward side is marked, so set the marked side outward for correct installation. This is required for better gear shifting performance.
Place the chain over the largest chain ring and the smallest sprocket. Set the chain length so both the guide and the tension pulleys line up in front along a straight line drawn between the ground and the rear wheel axle. Mount the battery. First, shift the rear derailleur to the fifth gear from the smallest sprocket. Push the button of junction A to change the adjustment mode of the rear derailleur. The LED of junction A turns on when the adjustment mode is set correctly. When pushing the shift switch X, the guide pulley moves towards the inside. And when pushing the shift switch Y, the guide pulley moves towards the outside. There are 12 steps from the initial position towards the inside and 12 steps towards the outside. A total of 25 steps can be adjusted. When adjusting, the guide pulley moves too far and then returns to confirm the adjustment direction. When you want to check the positions of the guide pulley and gears, do so at the end when the action of all components has stopped. While turning the crank, operate the shift switch X to move the guide pulley inside to the position where the chain contacts the fourth gear and makes a small noise. Next, operate the shift switch Y four times and move the guide pulley outwards four steps. This is the standard position. The LED turns off when the button of junction A is pushed to change the mode from adjustment to shifting. Check that no gears make any noise by shifting through all the gears. When a fine adjustment is necessary, change to the setting mode to adjust the rear derailleur. At the end, set the position of the stroke end. Shift the rear derailleur to the largest sprocket and tighten the low adjustment screw until it touches the left link. When shifting from the larger sprocket to the smaller sprocket, the rear derailleur returns after overstroking to the outside. Shift to the smallest sprocket and tighten the top adjustment screw until it touches the left link at the position where the rear derailleur stops. Rotate the top adjustment screw counterclockwise once from that position and secure the amount of overstroke. Mount the chain on the smallest chain ring and the largest sprocket and turn the crank arm backward. Then turn the B-tension adjustment screw to adjust the guide pulley as close to the sprocket as possible but not so close that it touches. Next, 
set the chain to the smallest sprocket and repeat the previous procedure to make sure that the pulley does not touch the sprocket. First, we will start with the adjustment from the low side of the front derailleur. Set the chain over the smallest chain ring and the largest sprocket. Turn the low side adjusting bolt with a 2mm Allen key so that the clearance between the chain and the chain guide inside plate is set from 0.5 to 1mm. Set the chain to the largest chain ring and the smallest sprocket. And now, turn the top side adjusting bolt with a 2mm Allen key so that the clearance between the chain and the chain guide outside plate is set from 0.5 to 1mm. The low side adjusting bolt, the top side adjusting bolt and the support bolt are located very close to each other. So be careful not to mix up the different bolts for adjustment. The battery reaches its 100% full charge level in about 1 hour and 30 minutes. About 1,000 kilometers of riding is possible at full charge, according to our comprehensive test results, although the performance is likely to be affected by weather conditions, shifting times and so forth. Also, even if the remaining capacity of the battery drops to 50% of full charge capacity, you can still ride about 250 kilometers, which is equivalent to a one-day race. The remaining amount of charge in the battery can be checked by the battery indicator of junction A or the battery display of the flight deck. A special flight deck cycle computer for the system is available. For more detailed information on how to mount and use it, please read the flight deck service instructions. When the battery gets to the lower level of its charge, the front derailleur stops first and then the rear derailleur stops. When the battery runs out, the derailleurs stop at the last shifting positions. This system goes into automatic battery saving sleep mode very quickly, but this is cancelled by the switch operation and quick shifting is possible without time loss. FD 7970 moves the guide plate to the optimum position according to the position of the rear derailleur, thus ensuring stress-free riding and precise shifting, whilst also preventing the chain from coming off. For instance, Let's say you cross chain when riding, where you put the chain on the largest chain ring in the front and on the largest sprocket in the rear. When you shift down to the smallest chain ring, the front derailleur automatically moves to prevent the chain from coming off toward the inside. First, the front derailleur stays at the position necessary for shifting, 
and then it moves to the optimum position of the smallest chain ring just a second later. Also, when the chain is on the smallest chain ring and you shift the rear derailleur from the largest sprocket to the smallest sprocket, the front derailleur automatically moves to prevent contact between the chain guide outer plate and the chain. In the same way, when the chain is on the smallest chain ring and on the smallest sprocket, the shift up is done in two steps to prevent the chain from coming off toward the outside. Again, first, the front derailleur stays at the position necessary for shifting, and then it moves to the optimum position of the largest chain ring just a second later. In the same way, when the chain is on the largest chain ring and you shift the rear derailleur from the smallest sprocket to the largest sprocket, the front derailleur automatically moves to prevent contact between the chain guide inner plate and the chain. If the chain comes off, keep pressing the shift switch X of the left lever. The front derailleur stays at the most outside position and the chain returns to its former state. To protect the system from accidents such as crashes, the saver function goes into operation on a strong impact to temporarily release the connection of the motor and the link so that the rear derailleur no longer functions normally. In such a situation, press the button of junction A for at least five seconds. This will restore the connection between the motor and the link, and the rear derailleur is restored from the saver function to its former state. Operate the shift switch to confirm the connection has been restored. The system checker included in the system can identify the location of trouble that cannot be identified visually. First, connect the components and system checker and then press the check button. When there is no trouble, the green lamp turns on. Moreover, the system checker offers an additional function of changing between shifting up and down with the shift switches X and Y. Please note that the change affects the setting mode of the rear derailleur. See the relevant service instructions for more information about the checking method and the changeover of shift switches. Finally, some notes on maintenance. The whole system is waterproof, but correct installation is required. So, when you wash your bike, make sure that the battery and the connector are connected securely.
also to preserve the waterproofing of the rear derailleur. Do not lubricate the links as it may cause damage to the O-ring of the waterproofing. Maintenance of the pulley can be done in the same way as with a conventional rear derailleur. That's the end of our explanation of the installation and adjustment of the 7970 series. Please instruct your customers on their correct use to afford them a fantastic road racing experience.